Right, mate. God, this sea. I've been stuck behind a funeral cortege for the last hour. In rush hour. I'm all for respect for the deceased, but what about some for hard-working black cab drivers? But, did you know, mate, a funeral was a setting for the very first gladiator battle. In 246 BC, a fancy-pants Roman aristocrat, Julius Brutus Perra, popped his clogs and his sons thought what better way to remember dear old dad than have three pairs of slaves fight to the death at his tomb. Nice. When these battles moved to amphitheatres, they became the hottest ticket in town. In Pompeii, they've uncovered huge billboard-style advertisements for upcoming fights painted on the walls. And the muscly bruisers even became heartthrobs for the ladies. Proper pinups. Graffiti was found scrawled on a city wall saying, Celadus Suspirium Polarum, which means, Celadus makes the girls swoop. <sighs> ah, what a hunk. <laughs> oh, come on, put your foot down, missus. Now, you're talking to a Spurs v Arsenal veteran here, but the citizens at these bouts were whipped into a proper manic frenzy. First, there'd be wild beasts from the four corners of the Empire doing battle with convicted criminals for their viewing pleasure. And as the band played to a deafening crescendo, the heroes of the hour, the gladiators, would swagger on the fighting pairs. There'd be Cestus fighters with their arms bound in leather and spikes, and Aquites on horseback with big old spears and daggers. This was not a day out for your old grand. If a gladiator had enough of being clobbered over the head with a trident for the afternoon, he'd raise his left index finger for mercy. But sometimes the wealthy sponsor of the game, even the emperor himself, could decide whether the poor sod lived or died. In the movies, you might have seen them give the old thumbs down when they wanted a bloke finished off, but it didn't happen that way. A thumbs up was actually the signal to draw your sword and do him in. And to save his life, the sponsor would tuck his thumb inside his fist, like a sword going back into a sheath. Oi, is this National Numpty Day? But really, it was pretty rare for one of the big name gladiators to croak in the arena. You see, the top ones were like heavyweight champs of their day. They had their own trainers and practised together in barracks and were fed on high-energy diets and got the best medical treatment. Now, this didn't come cheap for the trainer, so it'd be pretty bad business to kill off their prize brawler. And the sponsors would have to be filthy rich if you wanted a gladiator to cop it, because he'd have to pay the trainer up to 100 times the fee of a gladiator who won. So, when back then, half the population of Rome croaked it with disease before they turned 20 years old, life in a barracks for your first-rate gladiators was pretty cushy. They only had two or three big fights a year, and during the first century AD, there was a 90% survival rate. Some of them even reached retirement and put their feet up as freemen. Really, it was the yobbos in the stands yelling for their heads that got the raw deal. Uh, where, where did you say you were going again, mate? If you want to hear more of this interesting malarkey, then don't be a numpty and subscribe here now. Oh.